In, in the previous video, I have explained how to store collections of data, so sorted lists of elements one after the other using C Sharp's list structure, okay? Uh, which is great, it's very flexible, um, and it's very, it's very handy. I use it all the time, actually, when I write C Sharp code. Uh, but in fact, in a way, lists are a very um, C Sharp specific way of uh, storing information, storing sorted information. Um, but there's actually a, a different type or a different structure that is way, way more fundamental in computer science terms. And it's actually shared by pretty much any programming language that I know of, uh, which are called arrays, okay? Arrays are a very similar structure, and they also store sorted lists of elements one after the other. And um, it's only that they have a few differences that I'm with lists that I'm going to explain in the next video. So, but you will find them very often in C Sharp as well, in any other programming languages. So I think it's very important that we, that we, that we take a look at how to create them and how to use them. And then in the next video, I will explain about when to use arrays and when to use lists, okay? Um, so let's say we want to do a similar example to the previous video where I created a, uh, a list of numbers that went from zero to some value at some particular increment, whatever, okay? So uh, what I can do is I can say, instead of a list, this time I'm going to create an array of integers. And the way that works is that I also have to type the array. And if you're coming from the pre previous video, you may say, oh, so you probably want to do something like this, uh, an array of integers. That kind of makes sense from a design perspective, but no, that's not how it works. <laughs> the way you actually create, the way you declare an array of integers is by typing the word integer. And then after that, opening and closing square brackets with nothing inside of them to signify that this item here, this variable is not anymore one single integer, but it's an array of integer. And actually this uh, syntax is shared among other programming languages, like for example, Java. Java also de declares um, Java and C and C++, they also declare arrays like this, uh, not JavaScript. Uh, <clears throat> now, we also, when we declare a, an array, we also have to initialize it. And we also have to use like a, a version of that strange constructor flavor that I was showing before when it came to lists. So I also need to use the new keyword. I also need to specify again the type that I'm going to be using. But now in this case, there's one very important difference is that, and it is that when I declare and when I initialize my array, I actually have to specify how many elements will be stored in the array. I need to say that and define that from the beginning of the array, since the very early start. What that means is, for example, let's say that I will want to end up with 25 elements in this array. So that's going to be, I'm going to type here the number 25. So at this point in my program, I have an empty list, an empty array of integers with 25 slots that I can now use to go into one of them and populate them with data, okay? So how will I do that? Similarly to what I shown before, for loops, in this case, are your best friends. So what I can do is I can say, I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to create a new for loop that is going to iterate from the index number zero to the index number, probably the index number 24, right? So I'm going to, sorry, to the, to the index number 24, so i has to be less than 25. And then I'm going to i++, plus plus, and then I'm going to say numbers, i is going to be equal to whatever. So for example, five times the position, so that I get 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc., etc., right? And similarly, I can now, write another for loop where I say I'm going to iterate from index 0 to index less than 25, so 24, and then I want to print to the console each one of those values, all right? So I'm going to print numbers i to the console. If I execute this code, you can see that I have pre-populated the array and I have added all these numbers and now I have an array that contains all these elements. 
One thing that is interesting is that when an array is initialized, because it's initialized with 25 empty spots in this case, if I did not pre-populate that with any information, if I didn't add, if I didn't go one by one and added any information there, something that would happen is that those uh, positions are holding the default value for whichever type I'm using for that array. In the case of integers, it's zero. In the case of doubles, it's also 0, 0.0. In the case of booleans, I believe it's false, and so on and so on. And for strings, it would be an empty string, like a no characters. So you can choose to initialize it and give them value, or you can choose to just keep them empty and then as the program evolves, start working with that information. And um, if you're coming from the previous video, uh, you may be surprised that I've hard-coded here the number 25, which is true. This is not very programmatic because now if somebody, like my team member, uh, my previous, my former self, whatever, uh, changed this capacity of the array, then um, I would not be printing the 50 elements to the, to, the, um, to the console. Or even worse, if somebody reduced the array to 10 elements instead of 25, I would get an error, I would get an index out of range error because at the point at which I'm iterating and i becomes number 10, there's no element anymore in the position number 10 in this array and then my code crash crashes, my program crashes, stops executing, error, terrible programmer, boo, <laughs> okay? So what we need to do is here somehow programmatically, we need to figure out, uh, we need to figure out what, how can we get dynamically, how can we get the amount, the size of this array. So something that we could have done is, we could have done, for example, just declare a variable called capacity, right? And then say, this is going to be here, and then I'm going to use the same variable in any for loop that refers to that array. And that is not a bad technique, okay? And in, in like very low, low level programming languages, that is a very common technique to use. However, thankfully, arrays have a smarter way of doing that. And it is that arrays also have a property similar to the one that lists had. Remember when we read how many elements a list has using the word, the property count of the list? In the case of arrays, we have the exact same similar pattern. In this case, instead of being count the word, we use the word length to read how many elements this array has. And similarly here, now we have, if we can hear, <clears throat> sorry, we can get the, the value of how many elements are in the array by reading the length property of that array. I know it's a little confusing why count, why length, it's just by design. It was a design choice that somebody made uh, when writing, when declaring, when when designing the C sharp, the C sharp language. Okay, and now my code is much more programmatic. Everything is much tighter because if I change the size of the array, everything adapts, and I can, and I, everything populates correctly, and everything prints out to the console correctly. So these for loops are never going to fail, according to the array, and are always going to do the same job. So um, arrays are also a structure that allows us to store sorted information one after the other to access that information to write it or to read it based on a position. And remember, position always starts with a number zero, okay? And the last element on an array is the element of, of the length minus one. So if we have, if the array has tens, if the array has 10 elements, the last element is in position 10 minus 1 equals 9. Arrays are structures that are a bit less flexible. So for example, if I go to numbers and I look at the properties that we find, it has less properties and many of them are actually inherited from parent structures. We don't know what that means yet, but it's basically, um, there's less things you can do with arrays. Uh, but there are also advantages about why about why that is the case and i would like to explain some of those uh in the next video so this is i think the fundamental of how to create a race of data 
just the declaration is a little different from lists when and how do you read how many elements it uses a different property name but the same the the rest the square bracket notation for accessing and for changing values uh, is the same the difference is that you have to initialize it to a set number of values and for the most part you cannot change the size of the array you cannot really add elements to the array or remove elements out to the array that's not entirely true you can actually do that but it's just a really really expensive operation so if you're going to be doing that you better be doing it you better be choosing a list structure let me get to that to those things in the next video uh, stay tuned for that